Are you looking to make a podcast? Well, Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily. Then distribute it everywhere and even earn money. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter where your setup is or what it is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify, and everywhere else, your podcast can be heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take your conversations with your fans to the next level, Q&A polls are the best way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, it's changed my podcasting game. It's getting me traction I never thought I would get. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. I hope to hear you soon. Mic check. Mic check. After finding these structures within the mountains, the first one they explored was the Buseji Mountains in Romania. And what they found there, absolutely mind-blowing. Super advanced tech, large tunnels, essentially made by giants. And basically what they call the Great Gallery, which is a library that discloses and displays in holographic image the complete history of Earth and mankind. Also, virtually every living being. Yo, yo. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. All right, fam. All right. Let me know, y'all. Let me know if you can hear me. Right away, y'all. We good? We good? Whew, sorry, y'all. I really apologize for that. I really apologize. Man. Being finicky with me. All right. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling you, I should have done that before I went live. I apologize for doing it on the fly like that. But I'm telling you all, it took me forever to figure out. And it, it looks like I still ain't figured it out, but I have. I just completely disregarded sound before I started that last live, y'all. Ridiculous. But um, it took me forever to get it down right. It took me forever. Because there's a lot of different elements to it. You know, if you don't want to hear yourself talk, because that drives, I'm telling you, that drives you crazy. You can't not hear yourself. It will mess you up. I don't care who you are. It'll mess you up. So, y'all, is TikTok getting banned or what, fam? Is TikTok getting banned? 
What do y'all think? For some reason, I let me go to. Let's see. Hmm. What do you guys think? Is TikTok getting banned? I'm going to be sad if it does. I'm not going to lie. Do you guys, are you guys impartial? What do you all think? Do you like it? Do you think they're really spying? What do you think it's about? Zuck wants it gone? Possibly. So you all seen what was in the bill, right? You, you all seen what that really entailed. Did you guys hear, I mean, about all that? How deep it really was? The bill wasn't as much about TikTok. It's about basically the government can deem anything on the internet as, you know, a threat or not withstanding, you know, or up to par and they can just veto it instantly. Basically, if there's a platform or a creator or whatever it may be, it's basically giving Gov full-on green light access to shut down whatever the hell they want. Kind of a scary thing. Kind of a scary thing. You know, like, I'm not one to usually get into the politics stuff, right? But I saw this, I watched this chick on TikTok, you know, because everybody's all, you know, on TikTok playing big dog on campus. Well, if you don't uh, keep TikTok, then we're not going to vote for you guys in the primaries and all this stuff. Like, it, like okay. But this one chick... She got online on this website, y'all, and she started looking up the stocks that all these congressmen were trading in, right? And fam, I had no idea the depth, and I'm not saying that and then throwing out no accusations or nothing. But she didn't show a congressman. I'm not kidding you. She did not show a single congressman that wasn't trading in up over $100 million in stocks. And that's just what they're trading. That's not what's in their bank accounts. 100 million, one dude had $450 million being traded on the stock market, fam. What? Not a one of them had any less than $150 million in the trades. I could not believe my freaking mind. I could not believe what I was saying. I, I mean... What? I didn't know they were that rich, y'all. I didn't know they were getting money like that. I mean, it's one thing to be a 10 millionaire or a 20 millionaire, but a 100 millionaire? What? That's getting out of... That's just... Man, y'all, that's getting crazy, though. The one dude, he had, I can show you the video. I, I don't want to play that propaganda on my stuff, but um, the one dude had an eye patch. He had some good stuff to say uh, to Chu, I think his name is, the, the CEO of TikTok. And he had some very valid concerns, okay? But uh, his was uh, his portfolio was up over, you know, two $250 million. Um, This other guy was at $450 million. They were all trading in the big boy stocks, uh, I, uh, Apple, Amazon, Meta, um, you know, all those, you know, 
So one girl, one girl, she had sold. So one, one of the represent, one of the Congress, a Congresswoman, she had sold, um, like a half a million to a million dollars in her local, her local municipalities securities. Okay. Her local municipality securities. So obviously there's a little, you know, foresight going on with something going on there. You know what I'm saying? She she saw something coming and sold them. I don't know. That's, you know, you go, you know, and that's the thing. So if I'm a congressman, Am I doing that? How could you not? I mean, bottom line is you're 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 dangling, you know, the golden fruit right in front of their faces. It's a total moral hazard. You're you're telling them they can trade in the stock market, but allowing them to make laws that affect those markets, right? Right? At the end of the day, uh any human being, I don't care if you're supposed to be some congressman, I don't care if you're a doctor, a lawyer, I don't care if you're the president of the United States. You dangle stuff like that in front of people's faces, especially when it comes to money, you cannot expect them to not exploit that. I mean, that's just human nature. I mean, bottom line, you can't really blame them, but... I just feel like there should be a little more checks and balances in place. I don't know. Oh yeah, uh the birth the birth certificate thing. Yeah, I've uh I've been seeing that a lot lately. Your your parent was a not your your mother was not your uh, written mother on your birth certificate. She was your informant, meaning a witness for said bank. And what happened was, so, so basically after World War One, what happened was the U.S. went over to Europe and they were trying to strong arm, they were trying to be a corporation and corporatize everything in Europe. Well, Europe, they basically came into Europe kind of mafia style and said, no, we're taking it over. It's not a question. We're buying you out. And Europe said, no, this is not how it's going down. So they started fighting and they had to fund this war, World War I. All right. Well, that was basically over corporatizing the world, I guess. This is just a theory um, by the United States. Well, the United States didn't realize that they had spent a lot of funds on World War I. So then they're out of funds, the depression hits. They're hard up, so, you know, they go back to Europe and they need, they have no money, but they need, they need currency. They need loans so they can, so they can trade and, and, and lend out and all that stuff. Well, they had to supposedly the Swiss banks and they had no collateral, so what did they do? They established social security numbers and birth certificates and made their citizens the collateral, guaranteeing that these citizens would work and earn money and each of us supposedly have a bank account accounted to us and, and this big old kind of money in the bank account that maybe we get access to or something, but I don't I don't see that at all. That's never gonna um ever happen. <laughs> So, yeah, that was that's the big thing. I mean, this one dude is on TikTok saying how all of a sudden you're gonna, if you didn't get the vaccine and all this stuff, and yeah, la da da. I don't buy. I don't buy none of that. Nobody's getting handed millions of dollars. Sorry, <laughs> nobody. So, uh, on that note, though, on money, what do y'all think about France? What do y'all think about France? If you want to see, if you so, <laughs> if you want to see what's going on in France, just head to TikTok and type in France. 
And then I urge you to go to other platforms and type in France. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I think you're seeing some of it. You're probably seeing it on YouTube, I guarantee. Probably Facebook, too, has some stuff. But um, I know somebody said something about Instagram, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, it's wild, dude, what's going on over there with uh, Social Security being pushed back two more years. Those people are getting wild out there, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, hey, don't underestimate the French, y'all. Don't underestimate the French because let's not forget who had our backs in the Revolutionary War and are arguably the only reason we won the war. The French are down. They don't play. They don't play. I heard that the garbage truck uh, workers stopped working, so garbage is just piling up on the streets. Uh, the consumers or electrical line guys are, are revolting. They're shutting off all the power to the elites um, in their suburbs and whatnot. Uh, and just marching, man. They're marching on. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah, firemen fighting policemen. That is crazy. That is crazy. Uh, Tartaria, I do have, um, there is some Tartaria on some of the maps I actually have, uh, plan on pull, pulling up today. Yes, we need, yes, we got to stand together no matter what, guys, for sure. I don't know, I'm not saying that, uh, I, I don't, I hope nothing happens here, you know what I'm saying? I hope it doesn't come to that. You know, um, unfortunately, there was another, uh, you know, incident at a school, be said lightly. Um, condolences and all that stuff. That's a sad deal, man. Um, but, yeah, I just, uh, it's times are uh, different than they've ever been. It's wild out here, guys. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, one of the best things we can do is stick together, you know, have each other's back. Um, just be aware. Be aware. Yeah, the planet's definitely misunderstood. You know, it's just there's so much more to the existence we have here. And we don't even understand it, um, mostly because we really haven't been we haven't been given the full blown opportunity to, you know. Uh, there's a lot going on there. There's a lot to unpack there, um, and it's sensitive, right? It's sensitive stuff. But like I said, I will, I do plan on still, I'm going to start a podcast legit where I only do a podcast. It's just hard. It's hard for me because I like to knock out lives and podcasts at the same time. So it's hard for me to go ahead and do a separate podcast, but I really want to do it, um, you know, and, and talk about everything going on, what's going on and, and all that stuff, you know, um, so did you guys, so we got to go back quite a ways on my videos to talk about them, right? Um, the video on the Terra Infinata, y'all, the Terra Infinata. What'd y'all think of that? About, you know, uh, the Volusians, uh, or Venetians, um, the Anunnaki being colonizers, the whole story about that. Isn't that just wild? wild stuff uh you know it's supposed it's supposed to be a fictional tale you know what i mean i have the book right here if you guys ever want to go check it out i urge you to check it out it's an amazing story it's an amazing story uh i've been in contact with the author and stuff like that for his sources and stuff uh and it's it's wild dude Wild stuff. 
uh, the land of Mars being a sanction or sanctuary or haven for, uh, like, Admiral Byrd supposedly went there, right? And that's crazy to me, you know. And then, so, I got to be careful with this, okay? But this book right here, no, you can get this on Amazon right here. Amazon, Terra Infinita. Now, that's just the second book of the series. Obviously, you got to get this one and read that first. The Navigator Across the Ice Walls, right? I need. They need to make a movie on it. It's just so fascinating. Um, and actually, you guys, I do have some... Uh, I do have some kind of uh, Arctic... I don't want to call them Navigator Across the Ice Wall shirts just because... You know, it's obviously copyrighted and, and I'm in good standing with the author. So I'm not going to try and play that like, you know, I'm not playing like that. Um, obviously, I, you know, that's his his work. Um, but I'm I'm kind of producing like some cool, really like neat exploration of Antarctica type T-shirts. Uh, they're coming up and I'm we're still working. It's a slow progress, y'all. But I got some we got some just sick. Uh, gear coming out and it's not going to be like plastered all over like night guys it's not going to be plastered all over things it's not going to be like obnoxious they're going to be subtle they're going to be you know sleek trendy uh fresh so keep your eyes out for that for sure for sure Oh yeah, no, right? Yeah, the movie. Yeah, once you, once you, once you see, you can't un you. Once you see what's what is, you can't unsee it, man. Uh, yeah, movies start to fall into place for sure, for sure. Movies definitely start to fall into place. You start to go, huh? Really? You know, it's kind of like it's their joke, right? It's an inside joke to to them, them being they. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it's, they laugh behind closed doors, right? Um, you know, it just, you, you got to pick what you believe, you know, is there land beyond? I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it's hard to say, you know what I mean? Um, we could go from there. The Mercator map fam that I've never delved into the Mercator uh, North Pole map of 1616, if I'm correct. That map, y'all, is so freaking cool. It is just, it's, and dude, I didn't even know the story behind it. Wow. I mean, y'all, it didn't get any more fascinating. Uh, oh, I had to restart it. I forgot. Let me just share this real quick. I want to, I want to, here, let me see. I want to take a look at this Mercator map and then talk to you guys about the story behind it. Okay? You already all know about the Peary Race map. That map is awesome. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but that Mercator, the North Azimuthal oriented map, right? That word was a, a doozy for me. Azimuthal. All right. <laughs> Who comes up with that shit, right? All right, hold on here. Let me airdrop this to myself real quick. And then uh, do a little screen mirror in here. And hold on. Well, we're going to look at all the maps. Because you guys, these maps are insane, all right? They're the coolest. I mean, arguably to me, these maps, you know... They, of course, been deemed or dubbed fantasy. But to me, these maps are some of the most, you know, I don't want to call them authentic, but just amazing insight, okay, to what maybe was a time that existed on this planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, Especially even the Perry Race map, dude. It is crazy to think. And, you know, there it's a drawn these these creatures and all these different beings and, and did the, you know, you can't help but wonder as you're looking at it, 
was there really once a time on earth where all these creatures and beings, these hybrids, the chimera, the freaking everything, you can't help but sit back and go, wow, could that have been, you know? I just don't see, like, when I'm sitting here looking at these maps, right? Uh, okay, so we got Mercators. Then I'm going to, hold on, let me set up uh, Monte Urbanos. His map's one of my favorites, for sure. And actually, you guys, just so you know, on my, and in my shop, Night God, right now it's nightgod333.net. But I also have nightgod333.com being transferred over there as well. So you'll be able to put that in and go to my webpage as well. Check out my shop. I have these maps on posters. The Mercator and the Urbano Monte. All right. If you want one, check them out. I do have them for sale. They're reasonably, reasonably priced. Very fair. And very cool. They're just awesome. I actually have one. If you can see it, you might be able to. Kind of, kind of not. I have the Perry Race map on my wall. And I plan on getting all these other maps. These maps, you guys, they're gold. If you can buy them in any way, shape, or form, do it. Because these maps may disappear someday. And if you have them, I mean, dude, I just think about being able to show my kids and my grandchildren, like, Here's, you know, tell them the story behind it. Like, just amazing. It should be passed down. Okay, so let's let's go to the Mercator first because I just love that story, fam. I love that story. Hold on here. A great, great story. And I had no idea that he had sourced it from the source he did. The, the friar from Oxford University. Okay, let's center this. All right. Now, boom. Hold on here. Hold on here, guys. I just want to be on my at least my YouTube so I can see what the heck I'm doing here. Make sure we're all squared away. channel connected to Wi-Fi boom it's gonna be a little lag got it okay cool you can see it you can see it uh hold on here now I want to get myself out of here I may have to do a boom okay hold i got to turn my volume down here. There we go. I can't hear that. There it is. Boom. All right. All right. And then we have screen capture. Boom. There's the Mercator. Like I said, it's a little laggy. There we go. Let's see. All right. Maybe a little far. Boom. All right, y'all. This map is crazy. Okay? The Friar. All right? The Friar stated that... So Mercator sourced it from a gentleman who sourced it from an old book... Inventio Fortunata. Right? Inventio Fortunata. Fortunate Discoveries. It's He was Latin, or speaking Latin. And he went on a trip, he said, to Norway. And decided to continue north when he came upon, allegedly, what you see here. Okay? Four lands split. By four massive rivers that are not flowing out, they're flowing in. Riddle that one. They're not flowing out, they're flowing in. 
And in the center, you can see right here, in the center, you have oh, shoot. hold on here. Let's see if I can you have a massive basically it could be argued that it's a small mountain, massive rock, magnetic rock. Right? Magnetic rock sitting in the middle of it all. You know, some could argue that it's possibly some some believe that it could possibly be like Garden of Eden type stuff. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to zoom in a little bit here. But um, the story behind it is amazing. And I want to recap it. All right? I'm going to recap it real quick. And it's... It'll be quick here. Right here. I had it all opened up here. Right here. This is a good one. Okay, this is a good one here. So, do you guys remember the story I did called The Smoky God? Do you remember that story? Where the father and the son leave, I want to say, leave Norway. Okay, to go on a fishing trip in the North, in the North Atlantic. Okay, well, as they're fishing, they kind of are coming to an end on their fishing trip, and they decide, you know what? Let's see what's there. Let's continue North. Like, could you imagine living in that time? Like, I think about that. Could you imagine living in that time? When you could decide as a father-son fisherman team, hey, I want to continue further north. Let's check it out and just go. Like, that's a crazy thought, isn't it? Today, I just don't see it happening, you know? Um, living in a time like that would be priceless or it'd be amazing. It'd be truly amazing. Uh, to be able to discover and, and maybe even not discover but explore with no no cuffs, no restrictions, right? Because I'm telling you, if you try to do this and go north like this today, you're probably just going to never come back. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, you're going to get stopped by that. You just, for one, you don't have the, you know, the means, the boat, you know what I mean? These guys are on sailboats, like not sailboats, but, um, old like Navy ships and yeah, basically massive, uh, like ships, uh, and they're while well, the Smoky God, the father and son were on a small boat. They were on a smaller style sailboat, but the massive ones, like the ones they used in the Navigator, are crazy. I mean, I couldn't even imagine it. I couldn't even imagine it. Uh, nowadays, I could see maybe taking a yacht or something like that, but it just doesn't seem feasible. It doesn't seem feasible. You'd if if you guys have seen the video, uh, if you've watched the video where those guys they try to take their speedboat to the uh, to Antarctica, how quick they were shut down, how quick the military was on them, was insane. Uh, and it, and it was a matter of if you don't comply, you will be sunk more or less. You will be shot to obliteration, uh, and you aren't outrunning them. You just not. You know, like I've thought about it. And if you ever wanted to do something like that, like you'd either have to have, uh, you know, I, I guess maybe you could get away with it with those like cartel mini, uh, like there's are a half hybrid sub speedboat, maybe, you know, uh, or a sub, but 
who has a sub just chilling. You know what I mean? You know, it's it's funny because I've had people, you know, I've had people contact me and say, "Hey, let's go to let's go let's let's check it out." One dude even had a yacht and all this money saved up and all this and that. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's not even worth a try. And for for one thing, I'm terrified of the ocean, y'all. Like, if I got sunk in the ocean, dude, I would freak out. That's my biggest fear. Like, it's a phobia of mine to get stuck out in the ocean, treading water, uh, basically just waiting for anything to come up from the depths and swallow you whole, like the most terrifying thought and feeling I could ever, you know, explain that scares the daylights out of me. That's one of my biggest fears for sure. Um, The ocean is a scary place, scary place. So Gerard Mercator, he so a little background, he basically made the map that we use as somewhat of a, which is, I don't understand why, but we use it as a standard. Even in schools today, the Mercator map is being used to display and show a map, the map of the world as it, you know, would seem to, to us. That's what I always thought it was growing up until I delved in and started digging and I figured it out real quick, right? Um, it's very, very skewed. The Mercator map is very skewed. And the reason being is because um, he drew it up as a cylindrical map. So that, and he had to distort all of the countries to the north and south of the equator. And it was basically for... Uh, like captains of ships for navigation so they could instead of you know a regular map they had a hard time staying and doing straight shots to other countries basically staying like due north they had a hard time using the conventional maps that of the time to navigate properly to get to other lands they would often get lost because the maps, the way they were set up, they couldn't just head like straight due north from one country to another because they would all they would end up way over in BFE because they couldn't navigate it the way the maps were set up. So Mercator set up the maps and had to skew the landscape so that if you picked straight line south, east, north, west, you would end up basically where your destination was that you were seeking instead of way off the beaten path. Uh, so, and that's, I guess that still holds true today, but the fact that we're using it as a world map is absolutely wrong because, you know, they're way out of whack. They're way out of whack. Uh, Mercator map versus actual land masses. It's crazy how skewed it is. All right. Like, for example, this. So the red is how it really is in relation to land masses. Right. And the Mercator is in the blue. Like, that's how skewed the Mercator map is. And yet we're still using that for our standard. Like, Africa is 14 times larger than Greenland. Yeah. Africa is 14 times larger. So at the end of the day, uh, it's way off. Russia is the biggest country by far. Um, yeah, so there you go. I mean, that's how skewed it is, and they're still teaching this in schools. It's way off base, way off base. Okay. Shit. 
sharing is caring. Hold up, guys. Okay. So basically, what I got from this story was looking hard at Arctic maps. Okay. As the winter shrinks, cracks appear, try to understand the reason for the changes. Flemish cartographer, Flemish cartographer, Gerardus Mercator is best known for his Mercator projection, the now famed method of taking the curved lines of the earth and transforming them into straight ones. There you go. So that it can be used on a flat map. The Mercator projection was invented for sailors who, thanks to the design, could use it to plot a straight line course from their point of origin to their destination. Okay, and this was the orig- the original 1569 Mercator's map of the world. And then, so he had a atlas, so he wrote a numerous, drew up numerous maps, okay? But the 1606 North Arctic map is the one that grabbed my attention. So Mercator draws the Arctic in four large chunks separated by channels of flowing water which meet in the middle in a giant whirlpool. So, whirlpool going where? All right, and this is supposedly what Admiral Byrd allegedly discovered on his flight to the North Pole. He got this idea from two 16th century explorers, Martin Frobisher and James Davis, who each made it as far as what is now northern Canada. That's what they say. Right? Hold on here. Up north. Arctic. I'm going to type in Friar. Mysteries of the map. There is one. That's the one that always comes up right here. Princeton. Okay. Hold on here. There's one guy, right? There's one dude on here that talks. uh, See, I don't think I'm using DuckDuckGo. I want to read you his particular excerpt. And if I wouldn't have had to restart my dang because of the sound, I'd have had it up. Ah, right here, right here. I got it, I got it. I want to read you this guy's account. This guy's account is insane. Just hear this one, all right? This guy's account is insane. Okay. Check it out. So, it says, This is the second edition of Gerard McCater's Map of the North Pole or Arctic. Hold on, let me just expand it. I want to, I kind of want the map to be up to um boom. Right here. Come on. Expand out. Bing. All right. So, one of the great cartographers' most interesting and important maps. And so, guys, real quick, too, I want to tell you, there's actually writing on the back of that original map. That original map, Mercator's original map can be seen. It's all laminated and put away, but you can you can go and request to see it. And a dude on YouTube actually turned it over and it's got all kinds of like writing and, and entries from Mercator himself. And what it says, y'all, is wild. Is wild. So Mercator's Arctic projection has its roots in his magnificent 1560 wall map of the world in which Mercator first introduces his revolutionary projection. As regards the Arctic, the difficulty with the Mercator projection is that to accurately depict the polar regions, his map would have to be infinitely tall. Mercator compensated for this by including a polar projection, very similar to the map shown here in the lower left-hand corner of this of his great map, the original. This may rightly be considered to be the world's first specific map of the North Pole. 
Mercator later reissued this map in an expanded format for his 1595 Atlas. Following a number of important expeditions to the Arctic in subsequent 10 years, Mercator's successor, Jodokus Hondius, reissued the original 1595 map with a number of revolutionary and highly significant changes. Our survey of this map must naturally be with the North Pole itself, which Mercator envisions as a large black rock, the Rupus Negra, surrounded by a great whirlpool in which four powerful rapid rivers flow. These rivers divide a massive continent, sized landmass into four distinct islands or countries. When the English polymath John D. wrote to Mercator, Asking about his sources for the map, Mercator returned the following letter which survives in his own hand. In the midst of the four countries is a whirlpool into which there empty these four indrawing seas which divide the north. And the water rush, rushes round and descends into the earth just as if one were pouring it through a filtered funnel. It is four degrees wide on every side of the pole, that is to say eight degrees altogether except that right under the pole there lies a bare rock in the midst of the sea. Its circumference is 33 French miles, and it is all of magnetic stone, right? All of magnetic stone. Where do you think compasses go? It's just a weird coincidence. I don't know. This is the word for word believed the word for word, everything that I copied out of this author years ago, the author that Mercator refers to is generally believed to be Jacobus Noyen Van Herzogenbusch, who himself references an enigmatic lost work. Now this I have never ever heard of until I researched and did the video. The Inventio Fortunata, a lost work, go figure. Little is known of the Inventio Fortunata, Fortunate Discoveries. Save that it was composed in the 14th century as a, and was a well-known resource for cartographers of the 15th and 16th centuries. The author of this work is a figure of considerable mystery. And arguments have been made that he is Nicholas of Lynn, Thomas of Kingsbury, or Hugh of Ireland. The work tells of a Monorite monk from Oxford who traveled extensively into the northern lands, including Iceland, Greenland, Norway, and possibly even Labrador. And it's funny, y'all, because if you look at Urbano's, Monte Urbano's map from 1587, in one portion of that map, he draws giant Labradors. Wow, that is weird. And I never understood it until I read this. The Inventio Fortunata also itself references a far older and similarly lost book, the Geste Arthuri, which adds a new chapter to the legend of the King Arthur in Merlin. Citing that his warriors conquered Iceland, Greenland, the Pharaohs, and parts of Norway. Regardless of the attribution of Mercator's sources, the idea of the Arctic being divided into four lands surrounding a black magnetic rock was even in the 16th century not new. Variants on the magnetic rock, then the Rupes Negra, can be found in such esteemed references such as the text of Ptolemy, which identifies ever such. The presence of such a magnetic mountain at the stream north may have seemed a natural connection for scholars attempting to explain the wonders of the compass. Curiously, though, referencing the Inventio Fortunata with regard to the presence of the magnetic mountain at the Arctic Pole, Mercator does not ascribe to it any magnetic property. Interesting. Interesting. So it also says, what blew my mind, it also says that this friar wrote 
of the Americas, in particular North America. And what did he call it? He called it the land of the giants. The land of the giants. On the land of the giants, there were buildings so tall with such massive stone for its structure that there was no way anything but a giant made those buildings. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? And here, I went ahead and went through and did a translation. Can't believe I never... Of all of these, okay? And you know what one of the crazier ones is? The... One of the lands is called, and it's weird because I, it's funny because I just recently looked this up, is my last name, right? Frisbee is my last name. That's my real last name for those of you that didn't know. Frisbee, right? It stems from Europe, a place called Lancashire, all right? And come to find out I have Viking ancestors Viking ancestry all the way to Irish. And then my mom was on the opposite side of the spectrum and the Vikings actually fought with my mom's people back in the day, which is crazy. Right? Um, but there's a place called Frizzland that is an island or a land of mystery that supposedly has to do with these lands. And it always makes, I sit back and wonder, could it be, is it possible that, you know, some down, somewhere way down the line, Frizzland, Frisbee, I don't know. It's crazy thought, but. They ended up in Europe, basically, and, you know, we battled with the Duke of Normandy and all that good stuff. If you guys ever want to check it out, check your last name out. If you guys are ever curious, right? If you guys are ever curious, all you got to do is go to, where is it? It's really cool, man. It is really cool. You guys will dig it. Hold on here. I was super stoked when I found it because I've looked up my heritage many times over and had a hard time finding it. It's not easy to find. Hold on here. What's that say? Boom. Let's get all the settings here. So check this out. Any in. You guys, it'll find, their chances are, it'll find your last name, all right? Check it out. This thing is badass. And it's kind of something that just, uh, kind of just popped up. So basically, these guys over in Europe got together, and they started researching, like, old, old, old tax codes, right? And... This one, I went a little overboard probably, but basically it'll show you your, your, your seal, your family crest right there. Then it tells of your history right here, all certified. And then that green is the land that I, I hail from supposedly, you know, certificate of authenticity, but it's called, I want to say it's surnames, surnames.com. Surnames or House of Names. There you go. Houseofnames.com. And it will tell you so much more than you will ever imagine, y'all. As long as your name comes up. Both moms and my mom's side and my dad's did. But 
I mean, it gets right down to the nitty-gritty. Are believed to have descended originally from the Norman race. The Normans were commonly believed to be of French origin. But more accurately, they were of Viking origin. The Vikings, under their jarl, Thorfinn Rollo, invaded France in about 911 AD. After Rollo laid siege to Paris, the French king, Charles the Simple, finally conceded defeat, granting northern France to Rollo. Rollo became the first Duke of Normandy, right? Isn't that crazy? Like, that's how detailed they get, y'all. Rollo became the first Duke of Normandy, and it tells the line from there on. And Duke William, who invaded and defeated England in 1066, was in fact descended from Rollo, the first Duke of Normandy. Duke William took a census of most of England in 1086. And recorded it in the Domesday Book. Isn't that weird? The Domesday Book. D-O-M-E Day Book. The Domesday Book. Sounds like Doomsday. Right? Maybe that's what it was, the Doomsday Book. Maybe that's probably what it was called. They just spelt it like Dome. Um, a family name capable of being tracked back to this document or to Hastings was a mark of honor for most families during the Middle Ages and even today. The surname Frisbee emerged as a notable English family in Lancastershire, where they held a family seat. During the early centuries, the family erected Frisbee Hall and emerged as a family of note. And they are presently seated at that hall. For those Holt, at that Holt. For those interested in a further history of the name can be obtained from Burke's Landed Gentry. So these guys are digging some awesome information up. So, yeah, if you are interested, y'all, just go search your last name at House of Names and you can find a lot about yourself out. It blew my mind because I've done so much research in trying to find out my heritage and that, that's, it's to a T pretty much. Like, cool as shit. I even found my mom's too. So I thought, I just thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, it goes way back to all these times, 1086, like, you know, these are times when they're just, you know, the King Arthur days. These times were when, you know, they were discovering these North Arctic lands, if they exist, and, you know, all this stuff. Uh, the Vikings, man. The Vikings were the first ones to even land in North America, they say. That was probably back when there were still giants roaming the land. Like, holy crap. You know what I mean? It's crazy stuff. That's a long time ago. Um, I want to show you guys. So that's, so, uh, I do, I wanted to do some, read some translations for you guys real quick of what, what is said in all of that map here. Hold on. Just got to send it over, airdrop it to myself. It's just mostly just super fascinating. These maps so intrigue me. They, they intrigue me on another level. They are so cool. And in my opinion, should not be disregarded. Period. You know, they said this one's, they said, uh, oh crap. They said that uh, Mercator's map of the North Pole. Has been disregarded as fantasy. I have a hard time with that one. Not saying that it's real or that it exists for sure, but I don't think it should be totally disregarded by any means. I think that's, I mean, you know, like what makes us so much smarter, right? We don't even know what they, you know, what they saw or experienced back then, man. Hold on here. Okay. Okay. There we go. So the rocks are black and very deep. That's the that's what it says right here in the middle. Here the canal gores to the frontiers and remains frozen every year for about three months, having the width of 37 leagues. Now, you can't see my cursor, can you? That stinks here. Let's try this. Oh, you can see my cursor. Yeah, you can. So that's this right here. Bing. 
right there. Okay. Next. This one's a good one. So here, that would be right here. Bing. The pygmies dwell here at the top, four feet long. So they're only four foot tall. Pygmy type people. Which they call very much those whom they sow in the green land. I don't know. That's some old English. It's kind of a little tricky. Here the canal has its doors. And on account of its narrowness has now reached a rapid flow which freezes. So when I was talking about the smoky god. For some reason, this particular canal right here, it screamed the one that they went through. If they did. If they did. Obviously, for entertainment purposes, it only may or may not be true. It's all in good fun. The Ocean J-9 breaking into the ports between these islands. It sacked four rivers by which it is unseen to the north, and there it will be swallowed up into the bowels of the earth by the rocks, which it's below the pole, and has about 33 leagues. Crazy, right? Crazy. Hold on here. In the northern parts of the island... I don't know what a bargu is. There are a pair of bargu, says Paul, which lie so far toward the water as the Arctic pole may seem to, to them to weep at the south. I'm not sure what a bargu is. That one baffled me a little. So right here. Here is the Sea of Sweet Waters, the border of which the Norari Canadians say from the report of the nets of those who are going, who are going to be there or who are there. So it must be there's a, you know, fisherman going here, or there was back then, maybe. Possibly. So, hold up. Let me do something real quick here. I'm going to send myself some more here. I want to show you guys this real quick thought I had saved I did save the one that's one half of a translation I think maybe this one one of them it's weird Google Translate will work really good sometimes and other times it'll have a hard time let's see how this one is this is on the back right yeah this is on the back this is what Gerard Mercator wrote on the back of that map. Yacht benign the reader, I allowed the gentle description of the circle of the whole earth and of its four parts by the method that nature dictates to us. Jay refocused on the example of Prolome, Prince of the Lonographers, to begin the geographic of the singular parts of that leaves of that leaves pole antique and the provinces false mipes at its apex so that descending from the top bottom but then from left to right i join little by little the septentrion septentrion with the mild the mildy and the east with the west of which i pray god to grant me grace and sun around good and honor of the Christian Republic. The pole and the extremity of the middle, it is the straight line drawn by the center of the globe. At the Latin's vortex, they make two, the northern and the southern. La Sep, that's the actual name of the map, La Sep, Trend. The septentrional is the one that can be seen all the way to the knot or north, I think. Opportunity to call it Borcal and Arctic. The Offren cites the one who appears in the 
force, says Ari. And so this suffices from the poles to come to the regions around the Arctic Pole. Green, Sea Land, Frizzland, Neobol, Zimbol, and a few others that we will send in a few words. Greenland takes its name from the greenness because Gros al Flemen means verd in French. I'd still in Congruz for the most part it is Pubel Central Arctic Circle at the pole. These guys are using some wild words. It's last parallels for Verde mildly at six degrees, da 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 da. But anyway, he's right in the whole context of what he found. Um all the days it was not it does not rain there, and the snows of the beginning of the winter do not melt there until the end of the ice. However, they do not harm the grass, for the pastures grow there wonderfully. The cattle increased at the the factages abound there in strange abundance for the insignificant planted in the pasture, so much that they make certain great heaps of butter and cheese to put them on sale to foreigners who go there to buy them. All this country is full of savage bears, with whom the inhabitants have a continual war. There have been more foxes, and what they say, listen to this. Hold on. And what they say is true of Lesaurus. We only bump into two places. His rivers make... Okay. I wanted to read you another one, but... So, anyhow, I'll quit brambling on. The dude writes that they have unicorns <laughs> on the back of the the <laughs> he's he writes the, about the unicorns. All right, that's kind of what I was hoping to get to by rambling on right there. Hold up. Now, of course, you know he could be writing it from fantastical perspective here. We have to stay grounded now. Um, nevertheless, and see, you know, I don't want to be controversial. I don't like to be controversial. But where does he come up with the detail? You got to, I mean, you got to just sit back and think logically here and use your, your common brain. I mean, is he just making all that up? I mean, it seems, I mean, it could be by, okay, so we can play this. It could be by word of mouth that he heard all this, right? It, you know, obviously it was by word of mouth, not firsthand, I imagine, not obviously not firsthand experience. It said he went, I think, but I don't know for sure. Obviously, it is word of mouth, but on the same token, it's not that he's making it up like a fish, a fictional novel. It doesn't come off that way. It doesn't come off that way. Um, you just gotta. I find myself wondering, you know, like, was this guy just full of, like, crap? It seems hellish of elaborate to just totally bullshit. Where is it? They make certain large heaps of butter and cheese. Da 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 da. It says, "All right here. Its rivers do. Meridionux, Thor, Boyer, Naflande, Occidentals. They name a bunch of them off." The smooth and icy sea embraces Greenland, of which Pliny 
A ferret thus in book 4, chapter 13, Pliny the Elder, calls the northern ocean a malki of the floor which surround, I can't read some of their name, which name is their floor, the land that is a very large rock which looks more like a life, an Eiffel, than a stone. Greenland has a monastery of order preferring friars and not far from the Mount Cast. Fay C. at night, the foot of which carries a fountain of lively hot water by which they do not heat up fiercely as by the, as by stoves every day. Rooms and dwellings of this covenant, their bread and meat fans, all of the fincture of the stuff, Iliates among the flats of this furnace. These same fountains taint the gardens, which makes them always green, and which a diversity of flowers and other pleasant herbs. Even the places next to the sea are never frozen by the favor of these strongly wing to all men and animals who please themselves there. From there comes the incredible rush of the tie of peppers and strong aquatic belts from cold places conveniently. There are apocryphal churches under the ordination of the Archbishop of Druntenheim. It is said that by their charms they quench storms on the sea and endanger strange ships. So check this out. He says, by their charms they quench storms on the sea and endanger strange ships. So magic? By their charms. They, they quench storms of the sea and endanger strange ships which they want to plunder. Of the sea at the heart of the rocks and by this means sink the other ships which fight against the storm and the waves of the sea. They are for the most part Christians and have all been faithful. Frillin, an island unknown to the ancients, is larger than Il Earlrad. They have no fruit there but more commonly live off fish. Its main city bears the same name as the first. It obeys the king of Norway. Wild stuff, y'all. Wild stuff. I don't know. Not a lot of people have heard or read the back of that. I guarantee it. That video I had to dig for. That map probably fascinated me more than all of them. Pretty much combined. I like the Urbano Monte, but there's just not much context there. It's a really cool map. Don't get me wrong. But there's just not much context there. There's no there's no really good sources as far as where he got the ideas for all this. Now, don't get me wrong. What the guy accomplished, amazing. Now... You have here the center. What does that look like? I mean, hold on, I'm in the way. Bing. It's exactly like Mercator's map. So it could be argued that he even copied Mercator's map. Now, it wouldn't be the 1616 one, though. It would be the 1569 one because he drew it in the corner of that map. But what fascinates me most about Urbanos is look at the creatures. There's your unicorns right there. His map is absolutely amazing. I mean, hold up. Look at what he draws in here. A Cyclops giant. Right? Now, what are these? Like, I, I've had a hard time with figuring out what these things are. Look at them. You ever see the movie Congo? Huh? If you ever see the movie Congo. Right there. Dragons, right? And y'all, look at this. Dude's out here in the water just like chilling, right? But here, check this out. This is what's more baffling. 
You got a griffin fighting a lion standing on two feet. Continue. Now, y'all, what in the world have we got going on here? A dude riding some massive seahorse? Like, what? I've never even heard of half this stuff. Look at this, fam. Look at this. Look at this. This guy's a hybrid right here. This dude's just chilling on it, you know, cruising through the water. Like, and then you come over here. Look at these guys. Look at, they got like tentacles or something for legs. You know, you know, you sit here and you're like, where could, could he possibly, I mean, come up with this stuff. Look at these things. I mean, so when I see this, I go, I go, wow, was, is he referring to like way back to the Atlantean days when they did scientific experiments on in crossbreeding man with animal chimera? How does he know about that? You know what I mean? Look at these things. What kind of imagination would you have to come up with these things? I, I mean, this map is awesome. It's the most amazing map, I'm telling you. Look at that. And one of them looks like a bearded lady. I'm like, what? You know? Look at all these sea creatures, too. Can't forget them. And he writes in a lot of detail throughout this whole thing. It took him uh, a little over a year to uh, finish, I guess. He must a couple years anyway. He hunkered right down. The original work was over 60 pages. The original work wasn't put together already. It was 60 pages in plans to put it together. There's more Chimera. There's another one. That one's getting big. It's just weird. It's wild. And then you got, where are they at? Oh, come on. The massive sea turtles. And there you go. There you have it. The old rock birds. From what? What story? Sinbad the Sailor. The rock birds would carry young elephants back to their young to feed. Look at that. And y'all remember the egg I found. Region de Giants. Region de Gigante. Region of Giants. Right there. And it was like everybody just existed here. Everybody kind of, you know, they kept to their kingdom or whatever. All kinds of diversity. If this is, in fact, you know, has any merit. I'm sure some of it's, I mean, I'm sure some of it's untrue. I'm sure some of it's possibly true. I mean, he even goes as far as the, the, the Leviathan, y'all. Like, look at that. And he draws a couple of them. There wasn't just one. There ain't just one. He draws a couple of them. I want y'all to notice... Something real quick. Look at his routage of what? Bing bong. I hate inverted scrolling. Bing bing. Look at that. Right there. Back out. Not that far. There's one sun right there. And on a track. There's the other. Then it comes to the next latitude line. Latitude, fatitude. 
There's another sun. Pure. Pure. Now they say that this map is supposed to be envisioned as folded over into a globe. But my question is, is just, where do you come up with all these lands that surround everything and the creatures that inhabit them? It's just wild. Urbano was born in 1544 in um, Italy. Milan, Italy. Milan, Italy. He was born to an affluent family, so he never had to work. In that case, all he did was constantly educate himself. Remember, guys, I told you about the Labradors? Look at Now, why in the world do you draw a giant, not just a little guy, not just a little guy, that's, that's proportioned to a reason. Look at how big he drew that dog. It's crazy to think about, man. You know, I'm not saying all this stuff existed for sure, y'all, but damn. Like Labrador, really? I just read a reference to Labrador and he draws that thing right there. I don't know, man. It's wild out there. It's wild. By far, one of the most beautiful pieces of art. I will definitely have one on my wall. No doubt about it. It depends what you believe. Some people argue it's a flat earth map. Some people argue that it's a globe map. Take a look at it. Figure it out for yourself. Leave it at that. I'm about mapped out though. But I do want to look at it real quick. I want to do I do want to take a gander at the Perry Race map. Alright? The Perry Race map of that one's of 1547, if I am correct. I think I am. Holding the crowd tonight. Steady crowd. Peary race map. Boom. And I will I will pick up comments, guys, here in a little bit. When I'm done with my spiel. I'll uh, I'll contact I'll we'll chat. We'll chat, chat. All right. I promise. Okay. I already had that open. Where is that? I know I did. That's not it. We're just looking at that one. Peary race map. Let's see here. I'm going to have to... Oh, go to my proton mail, I guess. Let's see here. Bing. Better sign me in. Okay, boom. No, nope, not that one. Boom. And boom. This is actually a really good version of it, too. And this was hard to find. Right there. When If you can find them what, that'll zoom in for you guys and not get all blurry, you're winning, trust. Look how, look how good that looks. This one blew my mind even, I mean, not even more, but just another mind-blowing piece of art. You got these little, these people right here. Looks like they're eating a fish. Then you scroll down. Oops, excuse me. My bad. There we go. Then you scroll down here. Oops. I got to drag, not scroll. Okay, this one, this one freaked me out a little bit here, guys. Not even going to lie to you. 
Where is it here? I'm going to pop it up somewhere else. Let's see. Where's that? Nowhere. Because I wanted to rotate it, kind of. But it seems like when I download it, I don't know, it just ends up blurry. So check this out, guys. This is freaky. They say this is South America here. And this right here is supposedly Antarctica, right? Look what they draw in here. What? What? To the, I don't know, the left. I can't see myself in real time. It looks to me like a dog-faced man and another possibly, I don't know, female or a monkey that stands up. But I think it, I'd guess a female. And, it, and then what's more is look at this thing right here next to him in the red, you know, crown. That, my friends, is a blemis. I know some of you know what blemis are. A blemis. It is a being that has been documented in history by both, um, I want to say Marco Polo and Alexander the Great both documented them. And they documented another uh, being that supposedly was a monopod type being like it only had one foot but it was big and exaggerated and it would hop around um but the blemies had no heads and their faces were on their torso all right freaky stuff Tell me that's not a, uh, it'd be the worst nightmare ever to see. Now, I should let me hear. Hold on, I'll square it up a little more. What is that? So this one really fascinated me right here, you guys. I wish it'd let me zoom in a little further. This gentleman right here in the corner. Looking like maybe he's from Africa. But if you look closely here, I I have him. Up here. Actually, I think I got good pictures of him. Hold on. I want to show you guys this guy. There's something about him that is peculiar to me. Oh, he's right there. They ain't chatting. Where are you, dude? Right there. I got him. I got him. Just bear with me. Right here. Ding, ding, ding. And send. It's here. So we have here a portion of the period race map. It's blurry. Forgive it. It's blurry because the it's the way the print came. It's like a poster, but it just wasn't as crispy as I would have liked. But it happens. So right here, I got to look in at him. I thought that's very unique. You notice what's on his head? It almost looks like a like a a dressing of like a 
animal of some sort, maybe, or something. There's his crown. But what I see is, I thought maybe he looked like he could have an elongated skull. You don't see that reference very often, especially with, you know, a picture like this. It looks to me like his crown's just kind of hanging on the top of his head. You guys remember the movie Coneheads? <laughs> kind of like that. Could he be an elongated skull person? It's got me curious. And that's what it looks like to me. I don't know. Crazy stuff. There's a lot more to this world than ever meets the eye. And these maps are a lot of insight into that to me. Those maps, they're worth their weight in gold. They're priceless. They're truly priceless. Yeah, I've been going hard, man. I'm tired. Ancient maps of sea kings, yep. Ha, <laughs> Cone has classics, right? I thought he did. I thought he looked like he had an elongated skull for sure. I love it, man. My crew's staying around. I love it. Thank you guys for sticking it out with me. Um, it was my first live back. You buried with me through the sound uh, and all that stuff. So that was awesome. Uh, yeah, I had a couple of uh, kind of cool videos I kind of wanted to show you guys. Um, I thought I saved them here. TikTok's been going wild lately. I will truly be saddened if TikTok does ban get banned. You know, they... I wouldn't have been here without TikTok, man. Straight up. I would have never had a chance without TikTok. And you know, as much as they've been assholes at times, you know, I owe it to them. I owe it to TikTok right here now. I will say that. Without TikTok, I would not exist on a platform. I would have had no chance. Um, It's creating artists. It's creating chefs it's creating creators it's creating so much for not just not just our country but the world right i loved and, and you know what as much as i bitch i loved every single moment of tiktok every single grind Every single, you know, video that I did for utterly free. You know. Those times were so pure to me. It was just amazing. The excitement, the utter just disbelief that it was happening, you know. Um... What a good feeling. What a good feeling. No, it's being banned because let's it's not even a it's not about creators like me. There's guys all over YouTube talking about flat earth, man. It's about the masses being able to communicate very quickly. <laughs> oh, always thank the trolls. We love the trolls. Thank you, trolls. Appreciate it, guys. I'm going to get on a little earlier next time. Thank you guys so much. Um, Yeah, I mean, I could probably end it with a couple of... I wanted to show you guys this one video, Uh, this gentleman, and then... Let me see what we got. No, that's not nothing. That's not legit. Where are we at here? No. This is crazy, guys. This has to do with the moon landing, all right? I know you all are going to dig this one. This has to do with the moon landing. All right? Peep this. This is cool as shit. 
whether he's telling the truth or not, for entertainment purposes only, as always, y'all. I, I'm going to take a step out here, you know, kind of try and stretch my legs for a second and not look so tired. Um, grab a little Mountain Dew or something. But I'll make sure we're all squared away here and I'll, uh, yeah, I want to open this here. Let's do this. Let's do this. Sometimes this is easier. Add media source. This one's worth sticking around. Like I said, it's about the moon. Uh, desktop. Be with him. But in the case of how is in, and it seems to be this large discrepancy among people that they can't, for some reason, it's a little chilly. Yeah, it's getting cold tonight, fellas and ladies. It's getting cold tonight. It's clear skies out there. Whew. Some Michigan cold tonight. Um, I wouldn't agree with you in the sense of this. And for some reason, people can't have one without the other. Okay? If they fake the moon landing, then we've never been to the moon. If we've been to the moon, then they couldn't have faked the moon landing. Why can't they have faked the initial moon landing and still went to the moon? It seems to be some discrepancy there that people cannot, they cannot handle. Like, they faked the moon landing, but they've been to the moon. You know what I'm saying? They had many reasons to fake the moon landing, the original. Okay? It was a race, kind of like an arms race, but a space race. They wanted to beat Russia and all that because they wanted to establish dominance, NASA, and whatever. So they faked the initial moon landing. But they did eventually go to the moon. And the moon is real. It's not just a hologram. It's not just plasma. It's it's an actual entity. It's an entity. It's a real uh, structure or whatever it may be. Um. I do believe that it's possible that the moon was essentially designed, right? I do believe that the moon could be uh, under the control of a possible extraterrestrial faction. I always think about Moonfall. Has anybody seen Moonfall? No, the moon's within. It's local. The moon is local. It's within the firmament. Yes, moonfall, there is some validity too. Now, is it the whole story? I don't know. I would agree the moon's way younger than the earth for sure. I agree it's hollow. Did you know that it's possible or at least from my studies that I've possibly seen or found evidence that there was two moons at one time on this planet? Are well above this planet. Hmm. 
We don't see the other side because the moon doesn't rotate. What if I told you the moon and the sun are the same size? Well, think about eclipses. How convenient. And they're both local. Possibly. The moon wasn't the negative entity in Moonfall. The moon wasn't the negative entity. No, it doesn't. But once in a while they cross paths. That's why they have eclipses. Oh, I'm sleepy. In Moonfall, what happened was, in Moonfall, I love the story of Moonfall, by the way. I thought that was an amazing movie. And I thought it was so fascinating. So... It could have been, I don't know, I wanted to say, like, I don't know, could have been millions of years ago. uh, Basically, humanity reached an apex of technology, uh, you know, existence. They flourished, and they were building arcs and, you know, like Halo-style arcs out in space and they were inhabiting planets and they were you know transversing space and basically making space their entirety of it their home space right um so in doing so and the reason they could do so was an ai and this ai made every facet of human life Amazing and perfect and achievable, right? Um, Basically, nanomites, right? Nanomites or nanobots. Um, This made the flourishing of man possible, this AI. Well, one day, like every premonition for AI that exists, uh it turned on mankind and felt that it could build a better universe without them, that they were the parasites. So this AI, these swarms of nanomites basically flew in unison and began just devouring everything uh, organic. That's how it got its signature or, or, how it targeted its um, victims was basically if it detected organic, I want to say electric signa- signals or electronic signa- sin- signals. Um, when it did that, it would attack whatever it, it was targeting. So mankind basically got into the war with these nanomites and... They were down to 
very few numbers. Okay? So, what these very few humans left did was find a corner of space where these nanomites didn't know of or didn't know existed. And they built these AI-based, which was the same basically AI that was being like the precursor of the AI that was attacking them, a more simple AI. They built the them uh, basic, basically entire ships out of this AI, which were moons. And these moons would be sent to every corner of the galaxy to find sustainable human conditions or sustainable conditions to create life. While the nanomites caught on and they attacked, and the only moon that got away was humanity's at, and on Earth, basically. Found a corner of the universe that the nanomites didn't know of and created and started, you know, kind of started the Big Bang or whatever and created Earth and then planted mankind's seed on the planet uh, to basically make sure for the longevity of their species or the existence of humanity. Um, to make sure that they lived on. Uh, it's really cool. I thought it was awesome. They were basically they would use a, a star or a uh, what do they call it? Um, that nerd in the movie. He called it something, some kind of star. I can't quite remember, but it was basically a star that powered the moon. Um, and the moon, it's funny because the guy at the hotel, the moon has, uh, all the vegetables on it. They have all the potatoes and all this stuff. He started talking about potatoes. How do you think we got potatoes? They were on the moon, you know? And, uh, when they're finally going to the moon to try and beat this AI, they in fact see a bunch of vegetables and stuff inside the moon, like, freezing frozen or whatever they may be cryogenically frozen or whatever stacked vegetables in these like chambers all throughout the entirety of the inside of the moon uh (laughs) and he was like oh my god he was right and he was like hating on him for it at first but he was right uh the moon was like an ark for mankind every seed of every plant of every animal uh was there just in case right well, the AI, the AI ends up finding the moon, and it starts attacking it. And it's attacking the star. It's trying to uh, basically kill the energy that's inside the moon. And when it does attack the star, when it swarms the, the power source of the moon, the moon starts falling to Earth. And the gravity of it pulls, you know, it's wild. I loved it. I thought it was cool as hell. From the Netherlands, what's up? Netherlands. How's it going over there? Very cool. Operation Fishbowl. No, that was Nuke the Firmament. That's what Fishbowl was. Because it's like a fishbowl. Rainy and a bit cold, huh? No kidding. The world is spinning, but the earth isn't. Interesting. Hey, I love to see all the different opinions, you guys. I don't care. I'm telling you right now. My best source is you guys. <laughs> he said, is it flat? I got to know. Sar Bamba couldn't penetrate the firmament. Well, did you guys ever watch my movie or my movie, <laughs> my video on the firmament? Um, A gentleman who went down to Antarctica to work. God, he was like a security guard or something. 
he got close with one of the lab techs and started kind of trying to get him to share and indulge information to him. Well, it worked, and he eventually got him to talk about the blue ice, the sky ice, they called it, right? Now, think about this. What do you think turquoise is? (laughs) What do you think turquoise is? Could it be sky ice? Hmm. Same color. I don't know. Possible. Um, so sky ice is basically this really deep blue ice that can be found all over Antarctica. And he basically gets out of this guy that the ferment's real, it exists or whatever. And he took, they took a team to drill a hole. They've been attempting to drill a hole and, and punch through the firmament. And they took one of those multi-million, billion-dollar drills that can drill through virtually anything. It can hog out anything, any mountain, any you know, metal, you name it. Well, they start drilling into the firmament, and they get, oh, what do you say? I want to say they got five to seven miles in. And something happened, something broke, so they had to take a break. The part was, you know, way out, BFE, had to order it, blah, blah, blah. They left the drill right as it sat inside the firmament, and a month later they came back, and the entirety of the firmament had regenerated itself, and bye-bye drill. They couldn't even see where they had even remotely made a mark. Interesting. Sacred gemstone. Why would it be sacred? Could it be sky ice? Sky stones, maybe? It's not water. Firm is not water. Um, hold on here. It says it's the firmament. If you look at the exact quote in the Bible, here, let's look. So, Bible, Bible quote. On a firmament. Genesis 1, 6, 18, 14, 7, verses 20. I thought I was supposed to be able to... Okay. And God said, Let there be lights inside the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years in Genesis one fourteen meaning. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give us light upon the earth. And it was so. Hold on here. There's better ones than that. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear, and it was so. There you go. It's to separate the waters from the waters. Let me show you something real quick. This used to be hard to find, but it's not really anymore. 
Uh, let's see. Okay, maybe a little harder than I thought. No kidding. Um, it'd be the Atlantean. Thirty three continents. Usually you can find it here. So you got here. There's us, the known, and then outside here. I remember when I first figured out the thirty three continents theory, I was so blown away. It's it's got you know it's worthy of looking into, but it's not the what it is necessarily. Let's see what it says here. The great. Yeah, hey there, I can I come up, huh? Cool. We'll take it. Right here, there it is. That's what I've been looking for. The flat earth guy's asking the questions. Take a look at this. This is another theory. For entertainment purposes only, of course, may or may not be true. Yeah, I just provide the information. Yes, yes, yes. I've wondered and pondered over this one numerous times. Could we be part of a much, much, much more massive planet that's got little pockets like us? I don't know. All over it. Who knows? I still have a hard time believing in the the planet floating in an abyss of darkness. With, you know, and I, I used to be an avid, avid, you know. Yeah. Just... And it could be to an extent. After reading certain things and certain books, once you see, you cannot unsee. <laughs> yes. Creepy stuff. Oh, I wanted you guys to hear this one real quick, too. Hold up. I got to let you guys hear this one. And then I got to call it a night because I am boo. I am dog ass tired. Oh, where did I watch that? Son of a biscuit. Okay, hold on. Be patient with me, fam. Can't remember if it's TikTok. Hmm. I could have swore I saved that. I don't see it in my history though here. Darn. Let me go back a little further. I better watch some videos afterwards here. Wow. Was that on? The only other thing I could think of is shorts. Hold on. I 
Ah, no, never mind. Hold on. I got it. You guys there? You guys there? That's weird. Oh, suckers. Huh. Ain't letting me watch the video. Hold on, guys. Be patient. Hold on here. Out in the center of the Yeah, there it is. Be ready, guys. This is the last one. And then I have to hit the hay. And here it is, sorry. There we go. You'll enjoy this one, guys. You'll enjoy it. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Bing. Ooh, this one's taking extra long. You're being finicky with this one. Get, 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 get. Failed. You ain't failing me. Hmm. Hmm. I may just have to go to TikTok on my own. Forget you then. I can remember anyways freaking passwords actually I don't need it oh come on yeah of course you are oh there are aliens everywhere Rockfin, Rockfin, Rockfin. I'm not sure. Oh, he passed away. That's too bad. Ethan. <laughs> well said, Daniel. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's too bad. All castles and stone structures. Um, interesting. Dude, they've been that that's that whole and that's the thing, you know. Um, he talked about the whole smelling the whatever thing. That they've had microwave 
uh, nanoparticles for... That's why it's a little bit, you know, it's cool, but it's, you know, they've been doing that. I mean, that's just old news, I think. Irregardless, good stuff. Why did they make up? Okay. Why did they make up round Earth? And if the Earth is flat, doesn't that mean there are no aliens? If the Earth is covered by a dome and is stationary, what happened to the dinosaurs? How do asteroids hit us? Just some things I've been pondering. No, no, yeah, you're you're pondering really well, really placed questions. Absolutely. Um. That's what I, that's what I was gonna look up. Hold on, real quick. Let's see here. Just for good fun. You guys know my page is mostly satire and for entertainment purposes. You know that. It's satirical content. That's why my my profile picture says none of this is to be taken literally. You know. Let me see here. I need to put a, I need to find a place to put this so I don't have to do this every time. Cause then I have to go through and look for things. I didn't want that. No, not new message. I want inbox. Come on, man. Inbox. Thank you. Oh, really? Oh, really? All right, there he is. Let's see here. Sorry, the whistling is probably annoying. Oh. oh what do you mean? Hold on. There it is. So... Let's see. This goes without saying. And then... Open. Open. 
There you go. There it is. To answer your question, in theory, then you go here. Here. Bing. Where's the next one? Oh, there it is. There it is. There, oh, 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 oh. Oh, there it is. And then all these have their own respective fish bowls. Where God hails, possibly. Or the energy. I mean, look at the name like Fint, Machiavelli, Fraternity. Lands of Hercules. Even Thor has some lands, wherever he may be. And this is just from a, a fictional story. But nevertheless, pretty cool. Pretty elaborate. Take a genius to think this up. Like Bill Gates or something. No. It'd be like Einstein level genius. Or like Hawking level genius. To imagine this. Really fascinates me. And then you got that. Um, then, you know, as far as like the dinosaurs and all that. You know, essentially, you could just send a massive rock from the moon, arguably, to Earth. Or um, back to the story I was telling you guys, like, about the second moon. It's alleged that it's possibly the case that the second moon we used to have was actually used in such a manner as it was blown up by possibly the Atlanteans and used as a weapon um, to totally submerge and sink the land of Mu into the abyss. So... Atlantis, hold on. And I didn't realize this for the longest time. Actually, I just figured this out. Uh, hold on here. Where did I put that? Did I close that? Oh, tell me I closed that. Ow. Anyway, I can go back here. So Atlantis, the original Atlantis, the 
real Atlantis. Sorry for the... Right there. So you have the known, the known, the mythical Asgard, like in Thor. And then you have where some of the very, 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 very earliest humans. The real Atlantis and Lemuria. Now, there may have been one here in, in our area of each, but if that is the case, then they were definitely and most likely named after these in the fictional story. That looks like it could possibly be some sort of, oh, I don't know, something. All land was once living, guys. Just put it that way. All land was once living. Some sort of profile right here. Then there, I'm not sure. But the profile here looks like maybe leg, leg, arms. Then, yeah, they covered up the right here interesting though it's always fun to ponder i can't help it i like to fascinate myself with abstract ridiculousness good distraction from the world today at the very least at the very least fam um if you guys want go to my website uh, nightgod333.net or .com. If you send me, you hit the contact tab. If you send me the contact tab, I'll forward you the Nose Good Fun map. PDF style, crispy, clean, and righteous. All right? But I got to eat some lasagna. I'm hungry. Okay, guys. Rock on. Love you guys. Been fun. Miss you guys like crazy. I'm definitely going to be coming back more often, and I'm going to start putting out more content within the framework. This live could arguably be considered a little more edgy than I normally would do. But I missed you guys, so figured I'd have fun with it. Um, end of the day, feel special. I'm probably going to go back through and chop and screw it a little bit so it's not too, too much for the, those, the, the people. All right. Appreciate you guys. Good chilling. Stay in love. Stay in light. Be kind to others. Be kind to others. Stay tuned. I am out.